with um, the release of market at 7.5.8. Um, so that will be the current version of the beta and then going forward. Uh, the tool will include uh, functionality to be able to take uh, JSON uh, LD vocabularies um, and convert them through the normal um, XSLT process. So I wanted to show how this would work. Uh, the since there was some interest, particularly in the um, uh, the uh, Homosaurus uh, vocabulary, um, there has been a XSLT that I created. Um, this is the one that I've been working on. Uh, this is just a general translation of the JSON-LD uh, from the website. Um, we'll translate it into uh, Mark Authority records. Um, there's a couple notes that I've included um, in the XSLT uh, for how you would modify it if you were interested, uh, specifically um, around the 040. Um, and some notes about how the tool is currently processing data um, because authority records being generated or using this particular style sheet are going to be specifically topical based until the vocabulary, um, assuming that it's their intention, um, is to um, provide something that would give you an idea of uh, of um, some kind of granularity around um, what terms mean um, so that there's an intentionality around whether or not uh, terms are topical, um, genre-based and whatnot. Um, until that happens, the um, making assumptions that, that particular terms should be genre-based is really more inference. So um, my particular position is that I can't you probably shouldn't make those kind of assumptions since they're not coded into the vocabulary. So this particular XSLT does not, um, but you could make changes if you were um, interested. So these will be uh, in GitHub just generally. Um, I've included um, and we'll provide a blog post in terms of exactly how this is working because the process um, essentially takes the JSON-LD and translates it to XML. And so I've provided some examples so folks have a better idea of what's going on. Um, but if you're using MarkEdit, you would like to um, bring the vocabulary in, uh, like all the vocabularies, the XSLTs that I work on, whether um, in general, when you install the program, it doesn't um, uh, automatically add them all to the application because a lot of these I create are one-offs that nobody's ever going to want. Um, and so what I do instead is I provide them um, as part of the application in the XSLT folder that comes with MarkEdit. So you'll find these um, in the 7.5.8 version and going forward um, if you go to application settings and XML data um, you'll find a lot of um, XSLTs in that space, including um, the one that I've been working on. Uh, if you needed to edit it um, and you're using Mark Edit, um, you don't have to go to GitHub to get it. You'll find it in the XSLT directory. Um, and you can just go ahead and open it in um, whatever your favorite uh, XSLT editor is. Um, I like to use the free uh, visual um, code um, editor that Microsoft provides that includes a lot of other things that I use. Um, and you can come in here and make the changes that you need to make. So for example, in the 040, um, if you were interested in adding your own um, information here, there's a template that shows you how you would add a subfield A and subfield C. By default, it's going to just create a subfield F. And if the, um, the vocabulary was to um, update and include um, information uh, that would allow me to determine whether a term is topical or genre based. I'll update this particular um, XSLT. And assuming that um, you're using the one that comes in MarkEdit um, and haven't made any specific local changes, um, that file will get updated for you automatically. Um, so uh, you would get those changes. Um, I'm making some assumptions too. Um, here that uh, in the long term that the, the um, uh, 
preferred labels may make their way into the, um, the JSON file. Uh, assuming they do, then they'll automatically get picked up and the data will get um, displayed. Uh, otherwise, it'll just show the subfield zeros um, for the, the URIs for that content. Uh, so let me show you how you would turn this on um, in uh, 7.5.8 or above. So uh, the process that goes into this is the same way as you would add any new XSLT translation into the application. Um, you would start in Mark Tools, you would go to Tools, uh, Edit XML Functions List. Um, you would name the translation, whatever you were going to call it. So this is, this is what you'll see um, in the application um, in all the different places where you can use it. So I'll give it that. Um, I need a path. So this will be the path to the XSLT uh, folder. Um, if you can't remember where it's at, and I certainly can. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I, I probably should have left the path open, but instead I know I was there just a minute ago, so I am going to go to the file location. And find the XSLT that I'm interested in, so it's going to be that one. And then this is the most important part. Um, I'm going to tell it that I'm the original format is JSON and the final format is MARC. And for this case, I'm going to use, um, you can set default, the default XSL engine for, um, that it uses by default for translations. Um, in this case, I'm going to set the MSXOL one. You can use the Saxon one as well. Um, they both will work the same on this particular uh, style sheet. And I'll go ahead and save it. And now it should show up inside my list. Yeah, so there it is. Um, and so that's pretty much it. I mean, at this point, um, if you were um, interested in using it, you would go to the vocabulary. Um, you would find the term uh, that you were interested in. Um, select the JSON. And then within Mark Edit, um, you would select your Translation. Uh, location to the um, file. You don't have to download it. You just need to give Mark Edit the URL. Um, and then you where you want the authority record generated. And go ahead and translate the file. And that's it. Now you have um, an XML based representation. of uh, that JSON-LD data. So as I said, um, assuming uh, the preferred label eventually shows up here um, in those values, then those will automatically get picked up and they'll show up as subfield A, subfield zeros. Um, until then, at this point, they're gonna show up as URIs. Um, again, you can customize the XSLT to, to turn things on and or off. Um, the blog post will explain why these don't get um, resolved forward. It has to do with um, security. Uh, essentially, the security sandbox gets put around get, gets put around applications, and um, to some degree, the inability that I have to trust um, URIs um, coming from external sources because uh, they can potentially include code to to delete things on a local machine. Um, so um, that's pretty much how it works. Uh, like I said, this will show up in the 7.5.8 version and forward. In the Mark Edit Mac version, it'll be 3.5.8 and above. Um, I expect I'll finish the work on that one um, probably uh, around um, April 8th or so is probably when I'll probably get done because um, that one I have a little bit of work yet to do. So that's how it works. Um, so if there are questions, uh, you can ask on the, the Mark Edit list or reach out directly.